BFM, my name is Esther Wachuku, and these are the top stories. Peter Obi discloses Nigeria needs parliamentary system of government. Kanduje declares President Tinubu's insistence on him remaining the APC chair. Kano Court affirms Kanduje's suspension. Also, you have in a recent development where disclosures have been made concerning the APC chair. Apparently, details have emerged. An RFI reveals governor who wrote election results instead of conducting election. And in entertainment, Kibana Chief Spirit speaks after pleading not guilty to Nara abuse. Details now. Welcome back. The World News at 12 begins with the Labour Party 2023 presidential candidate Peter Ruby calling for a parliamentary system of government where the president can interface with citizens at least once a month. He spoke at a lecture at Harvard Law School in Boston, Massachusetts, United States of America, where he advocated for a parliamentary system of government in Nigeria. Peter Ruby noted that the presidential system is not working well in Nigeria, hence the country continues to have bad leaders who stay in office for four years without being accountable to the people. He said, unquote, what happens is, because of the presidential system that has no president in Nigeria today, we have a bad leader, and he stays there for months and years. When we have a parliamentary system, we can move a motion of no confidence within two or three years. If we are in a parliamentary system, a president will be a member of parliament, end quote. Elsewhere, the All Progressives Congress National Chairman Dr. Abdullahi Umar Ganduji has revealed that President Bola Ahmed Tunibra has assured him that his position as the party chairman remains unchanged. Ganduji, while addressing Kano State APC officials at his residence in Abuja, said that he met with President Tunibra on Monday and the president reaffirmed his position as the party's national chairman. The APC had pointed an accusing finger at the Kano state governor, Abba Yusuf, of the new Nigerian People's Party over the purported suspension of the party chairman from his word in the Dawakin Tofa local government area of Kano state. The party further revealed that Yusuf is sponsoring imposters to cause mayhem in Kano after, uh, after launching a despicable program of political persecution against Ganduji. In his words, I met with the president and he told me that my position as APC chairman, which the Kano state government was trying to remove me from, will remain unchanged. He reaffirmed my position as APC national chairman. Meanwhile, the Kano State High Court has granted an ex parte order restraining the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Abdullahi Ganduji, from parading himself as a member of the party. Subsequently, the court ordered that henceforth Ganduji should desist from presiding over all affairs of the National Working Committee of the APC. The application granted by Justice Usman Naaba on Tuesday followed an ex parte motion filed by Dr. Ibrahim Sa'ad on behalf of the two executive members of Ganduji's ward, Dawakin Tofa Local Government Area, the Assistant Secretary Laminu Sani, and the legal advisor Haladu Gwanju, who reserves at the plaintiffs. They were part of the nine ward executives who suspended Ganduji on Monday. The court directed the four parties where the respondents in this matter joined, including the APC, the National Working Committee, APC Kano State Working Committee, and Ganduji to henceforth maintain status quo antebellum as of April 15, 2024, pending the hearing and determination of the substantive suit on April 30, 2024. Justice Naaba also held as parade stopped the State Working Committee APC Kano from interfering with the legally and validly considered decision of executives of Ganduje's ward, essentially an action endorsed by a two-third majority of the executive as provided by the party's constitution. 
Meanwhile, the Reading All Progressives Congress National Working Committee has disclosed that the Inspector General of the Nigerian Police Force, Kaede Egbetoku, has been informed about the purported suspension of its National Chairman, Abdullahi Ganduji. The party executives maintain that non-APC members sponsored the suspension and that the perpetrators will be brought to justice upon police investigation. According to Moka, the purported suspension of Ganduji is downright criminal and has no effect whatsoever. He asserted that the opposition party plotted the political event to create confusion within the APC. Now, in another development, former Kaduna State Governor Nasir Arafai has accused a Northwest Governor of writing election results instead of conducting free and fair elections. Arafai disclosed that the said Governor had approached him on how to conduct free and fair elections, but instead of heeding the advice given to him, the Northwest Governor went ahead to write election results as usual. Arafai made the disclosure on Monday in Midugri while delivering a lead paper at a capacity building workshop for top officials of the Borno State Government. Speaking against the backdrop of state electoral commissions as rigging tools in the hands of the state governors, Arafai recalled how he used electronic voting to conduct a free and fair local government era election during his tenure as governor. He narrated that it was after the success of the local government elections that the Northwest state governor approached him to use his pattern. But after availing him of the technique used in conducting the elections, he went back to his state and wrote results of the local government elections he conducted instead of conducting it electronically. Meanwhile, celebrity Baman comes social media influencer Okechiko Pascal, better known as Cubana Chirpurist, has broken silence following his ordeal with the operatives of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. VOP News gathered that Cubana Chirpurist earlier entered a not guilty plea to charges of tampering and abusing the Naira during his arraignment at the Federal High Court in Lagos today. The socialist and businessman faced three counts of Nara abuse stemming from his actions at some social events and was charged before Justice Kaindi Ogundari of the Federal High Court in Lagos by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Kibana Chipprist was later granted a bail of 10 million Naira with two shorties and like some by the court after pleading not guilty to the charges brought against him. A few minutes after the court judgment, the socialist posted about not being small on his Instagram page. You're currently listening to the World News at 12 on Voice of the People, 90.3 FM. After the break, we'll come back for a news analysis segment. Well, we'll actually have Barrister Fred Nzako, who is a political, social and national affairs commentator, also an economic strategist to help give us his perspective to some questions that will be posed at him on some of the stories read out here. Please do stay with us. Welcome back. This is still the World News and actually have via the telephone a legal practitioner, a political and national affairs commentator and an economic strategist. And that's Barrister Fred and Zako. Barrister Fred and Zako, good afternoon and thank you for joining me for the World News at 12. Barrister Fred, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, hello, Barrister Fred. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me for the World News at 12. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good yes. to be with you. Good afternoon. Good to be with you too. Barrister, let's head on into the crux of the matter. We're starting off with Ganduji. Uh, Ganduji earlier disclosed to us, in fact, there was a video via his ex account where he said that President Bola Ahmed Tunibu wants him to the stay. Line, the line, the ha- line is more full. I can't, I can't, it's not clear, please. I can't hear you. I can uh, hear you clearly. Can you hear me now? No, no, no. It has not improved. I don't know how this, but not your voice. Can you hear me adequately now, Barrister Fred? Because I can hear you. Hello? Uh Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, um, it has improved slightly, but this needs to be be better improved. All right, Barrister Fred, I sincerely do apologize. The network has been terrible for the past three days. Worse, actually. So, first of all, I'm saying that Ganduji disclosed that the president 
wants him to remain as the APC chair. He made that statement while he was speaking with some APC members at his residence. You do know that he's embroiled in financial malfeasance where the governor of Kano, um, that is um, Ubasani, is accusing him of the monies that he was caught with in 2018 being stuck within his um, attire at the time where he was getting the money from the contractor. And the FCT too has been called in to investigate Ganduji. But Ganduji seemed to be unshaken despite all that has been going on. And he came on via his social media to tell us that the president indeed wants him to remain as the APC chairman. Offer the court this morning in Kano to actually ask him to step aside from being the APC chair and stop whatever activity he would carry on as an APC chair. What's your take on this? Well, my take is that, um, one, the order of courts at all times must be obeyed. Okay. And uh, we expect that um, Alaji uh, Ganduje should obey the order of Canon High Court. Um, the only option left to him is to go on appeal against the order or submit himself for for the liberation of the court on motion on notice because the order was an expert order brought Boswan to made Boswan to an expert motion filed by uh, executive members of um, Cambridge Ward mm. in the working top of local government area, suspending Alaje Kanduje from presenting himself as uh, chairman of the party and even membership of the party because he has, his membership was suspended at his ward level. And um, uh, he has to... He has to respect the order of court. But, but, but Barrister Fred, the situation yeah. where he disclosed to his party members at his residence, it, there's a video on that. He actually posted that video. I think he wanted that clarity to be there, where he was emphasizing that President Bola Tinubu wants him to remain and attain, retain his position as the party chairman. And that the decision of the president on him wanting to remain the party chairman remains unchanged. And this was while he was addressing Kano State APC officials at his residence in Abuja just before the court ruling came up today. So if the president has Ganduje's backing to remain as the APC chair and the court order that came in today asking him to step aside and stop parading himself as the APC chair, please, which do you think will hold sway first? Because him publicly coming out to say the president supports me and he wants me to retain my position as the APC chair. Does that super, superimposes the court order of today? It will be preposterous and a breach of the law and um, and uh, neglect of a lawful order of court. If Aladdin Ganduje pretends not to know what the court has said or, or tries to deceive himself or his followers, by asserting that Mr. President wants him to stay on as the chairman of the party. Um, that is a political statement. Mr. President does not make decisions on behalf of the court. Mr. President is not the judge, neither Mr. President a member of the judiciary. So if the court has spoken, we expected that even the office of the president would encourage and uh, insist that Alaji Gambuja respect the lawful order of court because uh, it cannot be said, it cannot be, it will be unheard of that Mr. President will support Mr. Gambuja to neglect, ignore, and disobey lawful orders of court. So but, I think okay. uh, it's, a, it's a very personal, personal statement by Gambuja, which right. should naturally hold no water. Barrister Fred and Zako, Abai Yusuf, the Kano state governor, according to the APC, they are saying that most of the imbroglio or the challenges that Ganduja is facing is due to the Kano state governor, Abai Yusuf. But here is the thing. What do you think is a logical thing to do? There are videos that actually indicates the evidence that Ganduja actually was stuffing money, dollars, in his, in his babariga. There are also witnesses to disclose against him in court, if at all they are called in to be as oral or witnesses to, to prove that indeed some monies were exchanged which are considered to be illegal and a couple of financial malfeasance that occurred while he was the governor. So if that is in place, is it not ideal for the National Working Committee of the APC, including the president, to advise Gantuje to step aside? Possibly an internal investigation will be carried out or while the case is cleared out before he's reinstated. Why would the president, despite all of this, being put ahead 
in case of Ganduje, still affirm his position by saying that Ganduje's position remains unchanged? Mr. Alaji Ganduje must be dropping the name of Mr. President just to to buoy up his uh, confidence and possibly um, the confidence of his supporters. But Barista Fred, he said he I, went, he said, I just finished meeting with President Tinubu, and he told me that my position as the APC chair remains unchanged, that he's backing him in that decision. Was, it, was, it, was the statement not made by Gandhiji himself? Yes, it was, was made, it made by, by Gandhiji himself. Was it, was it made by Mr. President or the spokesperson to Mr. President? Gandhiji said he just believe, finished meeting with the president. How can we believe that Mr. Gandhiji was putting exactly... Barry Fred, are we saying that Gandhiji... Hello, Barry Fred. It is unheard of that Mr. President would encourage a, a, a blatant uh, breach of the law. Barry uh, Fred, why would you say it's unheard of? of, of this of was, law, this law, was law, a law, conversation law. they had before the Kano State ruling today. Maybe Gandhiji went to tell the president that all of the evidences against him are false. And the president says, okay, fine. You are my friend and I know you. I trust you. Why would you say that it is unheard of that the president would not back Ganduje in that, in that particular position? You are not, you have not had the voice or the voice of the spokesperson of Mr. President. Why would you rely on what Ganduje has said? He's a man finds himself sinking in the river or in the, in the ocean. He can be close to anything. You can very easily agree that it is name dropping by Mr. So, Barry Mr. Fred, are we saying that there are some officials and some party members who will brazenly carry on anti-party activities and using the president's name to defend whatever it is they are doing? Is, is this a new trend? If you're saying that the president can never uphold or st uh, specify, specifically say, I want you to remain as the APC chair. So it's possible that Ganduje could just be mentioning the president's name if at all the president never actually made that statement. What would you consider that? If Mr. President makes the statement himself, then we can take him on. If we make it to his spokesperson, we can take him on that. We cannot take Mr. President on the statement made by Ganduja, who has been sacked by the court, whose membership has been suspended, and who is uh, uh, being dragged to by his by the government an actor for his perceived uh, or accused uh, alleged wrongdoing while as a governor. Why I can't the woman of Kano State. I can tell you that many observers of goodwill and many ideas of goodwill have expected that Mr. Gandhi has expected to come and give account of his stewardship. Especially with that thing, um, the video that we put was uh, went viral. It was often one of the current policy in America. Of course, um, he has um, uh, he has claimed that uh, he was uh, innocent of the allegation, but uh, the matter was more or less handled politically. Now we want it to be handled judicially. It's only then that we can say that Larry Ganduja is uh, not guilty as charged when the court has so pronounced. My only worry, my only worry, I keep saying, is that it is not because of the love of the state, but because of the high wire politics and the differences that have existed among the political gladiators. And that is why this case happened. If um, Gandhi's political party, the APC, had been in power in Kano, do you think that uh, Gandhi will be dragged around to come and give answer to for his um, for his um, stewardship? And that is why we keep saying that irrespective of the party power, we must continue to call uh, uh, public officials to give account of their activities. Barrister Fred, Fred in Zako, Barrister Fred in let me kindly it come becomes, in here. Becomes, Is it not possible it that the president can distance himself while whatever investigation needs to be carried out is carried out? Because if the Kano State Court gave the ruling today and asking that Ganduji step aside and stop parading himself as the APC chair, and then of course he met, according to him, he met with the president yesterday and the president is assuring him that he wants him to retain his position as the APC chair. I mean, these are two conflicting orders. And 
if the president is immersed in this, will this help in the public perception that there is a particular aspect or sense of bias when it comes to certain cases that has to do with corruption from the presidency? I mean, w w what do you think in this, in, this, in this particular scenario? President is saying, I want you to remain as the APC chair. The following day, the court says, stop parading yourself as the APC chair. Shouldn't the president have distanced himself at all? Will Gandhiji just say he why had a do, conversation with the president without actually do, having any? Why do you Why do you believe the statement of Gandhiji? Well, you have not had it elsewhere from the president. I'm not believing it, but he made a video asserting to that conversation. And I'm just saying that the president's name shouldn't even be in here in the first place because the case is being investigated. So isn't it possible for his name to be out of Ganduje's lips? I can, I can tell you that he's only preparing ground for, to, 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 to make embody him to disobey a lawful court order. And that's why he's dropping the name of Mr. President. And the only time we tell where the court order has is not vacated, either by appeal or by the same court, then um, and uh, that's where you begin to to see the the, the, the sound bites for the presidency. It is too early to conclude that Mr. President has given the Ganduja order. And I can tell you that it is difficult to believe that Mr. President will support Ganduja to disobey lawful orders of court. The best that the presidency can do is to give him support to go through the court. No, Barrister, the president did not support it. No, what I'm saying is this conversation was had yesterday with the president. Today, the court ruling from Kano came on. So at the time, the court ruling hadn't come on. Yesterday was when the party in the ward of Ganduje suspended him. Oh, that was two days ago. Where they said he's no longer, he should be suspended. And the APC in Kano came to say those yeah, leaders is, are anti-party yeah, activities leaders. They were involved in anti-party activities. The Mr. President may have expressed um, some level of confidence in Mr. Ganduje when the court order had not come out. Yes. Because, and before the court order, it was merely political statement by the political gladiators. Some people suspended Ganduje. Some people suspended those who suspended Ganduje. Because the local government executive of uh, of Dawakin Tofa suspended those executive of the war yes. who suspended Ganduje. So these are all political maneuvers. But now that the matter has gone to court and the court has given a valid order, I expect that the such order must be respected. And that's why I keep insisting that I do not expect that Mr. President will support Ganduja to disobey the lawful order of court. He uh, said all right. the, the, best that, the best can be done is to ask that the matter be given expeditions here in court and that Ganduja should, as a matter of necessity, discredit himself as a chairman of the party and even as a member of the APC. Pending the celebration of the of the matter, of the matter. Or, or pending the or only the vacation of the interim order is should be reported. Anything outside that will be a breach of the law and uh, and uh, neglect. All right, all right. Bar Barry's if I just quickly look at Nasir El Rufai, who accused the Northwest governor of writing election results instead of conducting free and fair elections. El Rufai made that disclosure. He said the particular governor approached him on how to conduct fair and fair elections because during his tenure, he conducted fair and fair elections, all right, using the digital method. And then this particular governor came to meet him. But instead of heeding his advice, the part that governor went to write out the election results for that local government. So a lot of critics and netizens ask, so why is Orofi disclosing this now? If he knows that this governor did this, why, why didn't he say something to the relevant authorities to prove that this was was an electoral mall practice where instead of a, a, a proper uh, and transparent election practice or conduct should be should have taken or, or taking place he went out and then wrote out the election results meaning that you you declined and disenfranchised a lot of people who came out to vote so if Elrofai knew this why did he not say anything then why saying it now many of the statements made by Elrofai these days uh, do not carry the weight they used to carry when he was in office. Uh, the whole statement of the statement as a lot of a man who has been frustrated by by failure to achieve his, um, um, his uh, target, uh, especially the target of being a minister, and uh, who seems to be running riots against the, his uh, political party. Now, it, but despite that, 
it is very obvious. It's, the, the hidden, it's not a hidden secret that there is no credible local government election in Nigeria since 1999. I said this with all sense of responsibility, that no governor or ex-governor can beat his chest and say he conducted a credible local government election. None since 1999. And that is why because of these um, actions of, um, of uh, lack of democracy and the level of the local government, a lack of credibility of elections at local government level, the local government system has been left common to us. Not made worse, made worse essentially by a section of the constitution that has allowed the state and local government joint account, the one they call JAC. And uh, until the standard code of the governors and local government system is released, that system of governance, which is very important, crucial, and the closest to the people, can never breathe. And no governor, I repeat, can claim to have conducted a credible local government election. And that is why in every state of Nigeria, the, the, the party in power wins between 95 and 99 percent of all local government elections. The other five percent or thereabouts is uh, for the state so that it will look as if there was a contest. All right, Barrister Fred, we, we've they, actually run out of, of time. Them, the, 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 the final, the final the question I want to ask in regards to this case, Barrister Fred and Zako. The final question I want to ask in regards in this case is. You have actually come out to the press to disclose that a governor came to meet you to seek your advice on how to conduct a free and credible election. This governor did not apply the advice you gave him, rather went and used his hands and wrote down the election results. This is what you would call electoral more practice. And this is against the backdrop of states' electoral commissions as rigging tools in the hands of state governors. This approximately reflects on a lot of critics and speculators who also do not trust the system at the federal level when it comes to conducting general elections by the president and for governorship, if this particular governor could do this. So the question is, if El Rufai, who says, as a committed and stand-up citizen, knows this, why is he coming now out now to say this? Why not at that time? So that the due process in terms of investigating this governor can be carried out. Why keep quiet when injustice is being carried out? El Rufai is only trying to romance his ego and remain in the news. Um, for whatever value he feels he's getting from that. His accusation of um, such a governor writing results is a highly watered one because he's only trying to use that opportunity to impress the public that he conducted an election. We all know that even he, as a governor of Kaduna State, never conducted a credible local government election. And he has not even mentioned the name of the governor. Yes, he if did he not. dares to mention the name of the governor, I can tell you that the governor will very easily dismiss his allegation and deny his assertion. And that means that it is now this, his voice or his uh, words against the words of the governor. And of course, uh, these are mere political statements that, uh, uh, can do, that, that do not pass the legal crucible of a judicial examination. If they try to do so, uh, by one, taking the other to court. That's when we will know where the truth is coming from. But I can tell you that these are all mere political statements to carry some um, respect of the public towards himself. Because, uh, and then the men in the news. Of course, uh, that is exactly what it is. Uh, because uh, he himself is guilty of what he's accusing the others of, of, of doing. And I can tell you that no governor in Nigeria, I repeat, since 1999, that can be exonerated from manipulation of the local government system and the elections. All right, Barrister Fraden Zako, thank you so much for your input and giving us your perspective on the questions posed at you on the World News at 12. I sincerely do appreciate it. Many thanks. Thank you so much. That was Barrister Fraden Zako. He is a legal practitioner, a political and social affairs commentator, also an economic strategist, giving us his own view on some of the news stories that we read out on the World News at 12. And now to wrap up, here again are the top stories. You heard that Peter Obi disclosed Nigeria needs parliamentary system of government. Gandiji declares President Tinubu's insistence on him remaining the APC chair. 
Kano Court affirms contiguous suspension. RFI reveals governor who wrote election results instead of conducting elections. And Kobana Chipra speaks after pleading not guilty to Nara abuse. That's a wrap on the World News at 12. My name is Esther Nwachuku. Good evening and thank you for listening. Or rather, good afternoon. <laughs>